Welcome back to Man Eater. In this video, we are going through 15 need to know tips for this game. I've recently looked at one of the developer live streams and I thought I would take some images of some of the stuff we can expect. I've tried keeping it like spoiler free. I don't want to ruin any of the story. I'm not going to include clips that would showcase like quests and stuff. But there are some images that talk about the quests and you'll see like what happens when you evolve and stuff. So if you don't want to know anything about the game just yet, then just favorite the video and come back to it later. But jumping straight in, we have grottos in the game. They are places where we are safe. So they're basically like safe areas. They are also fast travel points they are save locations and they are the only place in the game where you can equip and upgrade your stuff in the evolution menu then taking a look at the evolution menu you can see on the right hand side you have to earn xp to level up by collecting nutrients and you have a shark rating based on mass health defense damage and speed all of which can have 20 points each. Moving over to the left side of this image, you can see an organ upgrade, and this is a tier one advanced sonar, which is a passive ability granting a 50% bonus sonar radius and minus 10% sonar cooldown. Then a quick look at this image shows what it's like to reach a new age after leveling up enough, going up from a pup to a teen awarded the tail whip ability and breach lunge, air lunge, and lung capacity upgrades. If you are looking to collect enough nutrients to level up, there are nutrient caches, which can be found around the game world. These caches are chests that are hidden in each region, and they will contain a large amount of nutrients, including sizable quantities of mutagen, so listen for their distinctive sound to locate them. In this image, we can see the log menu, which shows missions, quests, and stuff. This one shows catfish fever, and it has a little bit of info about catfish, explaining how they overpopulate. Due to females spawning 100,000 eggs at a time, and males can fertilize up to 9 spawns per season, which is obviously 900,000 catfish. So the quest is to kill 10 catfish with the rewards being 500 of the red, yellow and blue nutrients. And then if you take a look at the far right hand side of the image, you can also see a story completion bar being 16% in this case. And there are different requirements for the region being complete pound of flesh, find the grotto in the bayou, Complete population control and the bayou hunt, reach the teen age and reach level 4. I'm not 100% sure on this, but someone mentioned in the comments that the story is going to be around 12 hours to complete. So if you're roaming around and doing absolutely everything, I'm guessing it could possibly take upwards of around 16 hours. Then taking a look here, again at Catfish Fever, you will see that you can actually track the quests in the game and they pinpoint locations on the map. Then moving on to combat, wildlife can be hostile so evade to dodge their attacks. When they glow up, they are vulnerable, and if you attack at the right time, you can stun them. This is going to be really important when you're on the hunt for nutrients, and it might actually come in handy when you are fighting apex predators and bounty hunters. Next up is focus threat, and that will focus on nearby enemies. Whilst you're underwater, it will prioritize hostile wildlife and divers. Then we have Infamy Rank. This is based on a wanted level type system. The more mayhem you cause, the higher your wanted level will go up and they will start sending bounty hunters out on the hunt for you. So it's not just you in this game that's on the hunt. When your wanted level is high enough, they will send out named bounty hunters, which are essentially bosses. And these guys will be tough to take out, but they will reward unique stuff. Like at the bottom of the image, you will see the reward is 350 of the red, yellow and blue nutrients. But you will also receive bioelectric teeth, which I'm sure is going to add to the amount of damage you cause. Upon filling up the meter, it will bring out the hunter leader. The last part of combat is the death screen. If you get into a fight with an apex predator when you're not ready for the battle, you will soon be facing this screen. But don't worry, you will see respawn at the bottom of the image, and that will spawn you back at a grotto where you are safe. I'm guessing you'll be spawned at the last discovered grotto or last visited grotto, but I'm not 100% sure. And you can always fast travel, so I don't think it'll be too much of an issue where it does spawn, which one it does spawn you at. Then what we're going to do is take a look at some of the different quests to see what sort of stuff is available in the game. And we have five of them, which seem to have a good amount of variety between them. Starting off with Bayou Bric-a-Brac. This one's objective is to collect all 10 license plates, and I actually saw gameplay of this one in action. Some of the license plates will be fairly difficult to get hold of, and you might actually need to be a certain size to obtain them because some of them will be on land, and as soon as you're out of the water, you have to struggle to get back in the water before you suffocate. 
Next up is the Bayou Nutrient Caches. There will be 17 caches in the Bayou alone, which will all contain a lot of nutrients, and you get bonus ones as a reward. So this could be a quick start to turning your pup bull shark into an absolute beast. Number three is called Midwest Zest, and the objective is to destroy the target, which seems to look like a gummy barracuda. Plus, I don't think it's going to be too difficult based on the reward only being 250 of the red, yellow, and blue nutrients. Next up is the Bayou Landmarks. There will be 10 in total, and if you discover them all, you will receive 500 of each nutrient, and you'll get what looks to be an organ upgrade called Protein Digestion, which I'm guessing might increase the amount of protein you can earn by consuming wildlife and humans. Then the final quest we are going to look at is called Third Cave Feminism, and looking at this one, all you have to do is visit the Dead Horse Lake Grotto, and you'll see that the rewards seem to be more for visiting a grotto than some combat-based quests. So make sure you're choosing carefully what you are doing because the simplest of quests could end up being the most dangerous. Anything goes in the water, and that is going to do it for this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.